appreciate the opportunity. Um, and uh, I want you to take your Bible this morning and turn to the book of Mark. And uh, it's a real um, familiar story, possibly to you. And uh, I'll talk this morning a little bit about Jesus, the wow factor. And um, in, our, in our scriptures this morning in Mark's gospel, you got that there? Say amen. Amen. All right. And uh, I think I have it here somewhere too. All right. Got it. All right. Um, and if you would, take your Bibles in honor of reading to God's holy word. I'll take you, ask you to stand as we read in Mark chapter 2, verse 1. The scripture says in Mark chapter 2, verse 1, And again he entered into Capernaum after some days, and it was noise that he was in the house. And straightway many were gathered together, insomuch that there was no room to receive them. No, not so much as about the door, and he preached the word of God unto them. And they come, and they come unto him, bringing him one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. And when he could not come in nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was, and when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of palsy lay. When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the one, unto the sick of palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. But there were certain of the scribes of sitting there and reasoning in their hearts, Why does this man thus speak blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God only? And immediately when Jesus perceived in the spirit that they so reasoned within themselves, he said unto them, Why reason ye these things in your hearts? Whether is it easier to say to the sick of the palsy, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise and take up thy bed and walk. But that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins, he said to the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, Arise, and take up thy bed, and go thy way into thy house. And immediately he arose and took, and took, up, his, took up the bed and went forth before them all, insomuch that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, We never saw it on this fashion. Now, Father, we come to you this morning and I ask God that you would just use me to say what needs to be said this morning, no more, no less. I pray, dear God, and thank you for these dear people. I pray that you would help us this morning, give them ears to hear what the Spirit of the Lord says. And Lord, we just want to thank you for your love. We want to thank you, dear God, for what you have done in our lives. And we ask you for this moment to meet with us and help us understand your holy word. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. Thank you. Jesus, to give you a little bit of a context. Is it, is it on? I don't know. No. I thought it turned on. I thought it turned it all the way. Oh, turn down a little bit. Oh, pull the microphone down. No? I've got it turned up back there. What's that? I've, I've got it turned up. I don't hear it. You don't hear it? Oh. Okay. <clears throat> um, what's that? We good? That's good. It's all good for me. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't like that thing sticking in my ear. No way. <laughs> I got to be honest with you. They, they have all that fancy technology, and I, I, I run the risk of breaking it, so I don't like using it. I'll just tell you right now. But uh, hopefully everything will go well on the tape. And let me just go ahead and get up out of this thing real quick. And uh, we thank you for uh, being able to give me a moment to do that. All right, there we go. I feel better already. Amen. Amen. All right, so let's just get an idea of what's going on up to this point in time. So we see, we see Jesus come to John, and we see John baptizes Jesus. And then we see in, our, in chapter 1 of, of Mark, we see that Jesus then is led out into the wilderness to be tempted, we know, for 40 days 
by the devil. And then we see that John is thrown into prison in chapter 1 and Jesus heads out for the region of Galilee and the greatest preacher that ever has been nor will ever, ever, ever be begins to preach and says, repent, For in preaching the gospel says, repent ye and believe in the gospel. Then we see Jesus going forward around the Sea of Galilee. And we see him in chapter 1 and he walks by the sea and he sees Simon and Andrew, his brother, there fishing. And he calls them to leave their nets and follow him. They go a little ways further and they see John and James. They're fishing as well and he calls them and the, and the four of them begin to leave everything they have and to follow Jesus. Then we see a little bit further on as they begin to do that, the Bible says in Mark chapter 1 that Jesus enters back into Capernaum and begins to teach in the synagogues. And we know that while he was there in the synagogues in chapter 1 that there, there was a man that came to him that had an unclean spirit. And immediately Jesus rebukes the unclean spirit and the spirit leaves the man and there we see the people in verse 28 of chapter 1 and immediately his fame was spread throughout all of the regions about Galilee. I mean, you can sense in this short period of time the climactic height of what is getting ready to happen. And what we're trying to understand this morning is that we are not here just to be here this morning. We are here for a much greater and larger cause, and that cause is the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. And so we see Jesus going forward. We see where he enters into the house of Simon Peter. And we see where he heals his mother-in-law sick with the fever. Then we hear that they begin to bring many to him that are with, possessed with devils. And the Bible says in chapter 1 that he heals them all. I mean, you can imagine now at this point, people are thinking like, man, what in the world is going on? Then we see, as we drop down into in chapter 1, we see that Jesus is then comes and he's preaching again. And where he is, he's going, a man with leprosy comes up to him. And Jesus reaches out and heals the man of leprosy. Now watch this. When Jesus heals the man of leprosy, Jesus, because of the law, tells him, look, okay, here's what you've got to do. You're healed, you're cleansed, and you can imagine what that must have been like. I mean, here's a man that would have to stand afar off, and he, the only thing he could do in life was shout, unclean, unclean, unclean. And now, as he's met Jesus, and Jesus has reached out and touched him and healed him, and completely healed him of his sores, his leprosy is gone. He's standing there, and you can only imagine in his heart the joy and the excitement and the enthusiasm Glad 
I need to bring my timid voice today. Amen? Amen. Oh, yeah, by the way. I just want to introduce you to my wonderful family. Can't even hear me today. Amen. Amen. I was afraid that when Brother Lee told y'all that I was going to be here, nobody would show up. <laughs> so I asked him if they would just come to support me. Amen. <laughs> so here's the man we see him in John in Mark chapter 1. And Jesus tells him in 44, he says, Don't tell nobody. But in verse 45, the Bible says, look at it what it says. But he went out and began to, to publish it much and add to blaze abroad the matter insomuch that Jesus could no more openly enter into the city but was without in a desert place. And that didn't even matter because the Bible says, and they came to him from every single corner that they could come to him. You know why? It's because somebody got excited because they got healed by Jesus. They made it. You know this morning, if you sit here, shed to the shed blood of Jesus, you have been healed this morning. Amen. Do you hear me? You have been healed of an uncurable disease called sin. And you had nothing about you that was going to work out until Jesus showed up. Amen. You ain't getting it yet, but I promise you will before the day's over, I hope. Amen. So we see here that Jesus now has to go out into the desert place because the crowd was so excited. They were so enlightened to the fact that they could hardly wait to get to where Jesus was to see what he was going to do next. Mm. I can stay there possibly and preach a little while right there, amen? amen. If we can show people what Jesus is doing in our life today, maybe we wouldn't have so many churches that are empty. Maybe we wouldn't have to work so hard to try to understand Jesus is the answer to your problems. Amen. I'm not saying that about this church. I'm just saying about all churches. I'm saying about my church. I'm saying about any church or pastor. I'm guarantee you there are open pews in every single church in America today. Why? Because people are not excited about Jesus is doing among his people no more. Amen. 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 <laughs> My kids, grandkids are here. I have ten. Five are here this morning. And I'm going to put them on the spot this morning. You better not fail me because if you fail me, it's going to be over. <laughs> when COVID, whatever you want to call it, struck, and the, grand, and the kids couldn't go to Sunday school no more. We started having, when they come to our house every third Sunday, we started having church at Grandpa's house. And I'll tell you right now, they'll tell you, they'll testify just like we have this morning. I mean, we're just going right at it, amen. And when they come in there, the number one rule, you ready, Pays? You ready? The number one rule of having church at Grandpa's house is to have Oh, come on. I did not hear you. What is it? <laughs> the number one rule at Grandpa's church is to have fun. Why? Because we have something to have fun about. Amen. Amen. I remember when I was chasing alcohol. That didn't leave me having much joy. I remember when I used to be a pothead. That didn't leave me with much joy. I remember running out there on the streets. That didn't leave me with nothing but misery and shame and pain. But this morning, by the grace of God, I got something to be happy about. I got something to have fun about. I got something to rejoice about. And whether you help me or not, it don't matter, amen. I'm going to have F you and because of what God has done in my life. Amen. Amen. This man got healed by leprosy, man. He didn't care if you made fun of him. He didn't care if you didn't listen. He didn't care if you turned his back on. He did not care. So that brings us to our text this morning. That was just an intro. All right. You don't have to pay extra for that. <laughs> By the way, I think this is an amazing church. Because most churches start at 11. The preacher has to finish by noon. You folks seem that to be a problem. So you decide to start at 10. So the preacher can have two hours to preach. And still get done by noon. And not be able to... Say the lady back there just fell out. So we get... <laughs> so so we... Somebody call 911. I got a chief captain right back here. He'll know how to do paramedics over. He'll fix you up. Don't worry about it. You don't got to fall out. I got it covered. Amen. Huh? Amen. But you see, this morning the problem is, is that 
When we come to our text this morning, the crowds entered into Capernaum and the city was buzzing with excitement and entering to the house, the crowd pressed in so much that there was no room, not even for one more person. And here we see these four men that had love and hope and faith. They had a friend that could not walk. They had a man that crippled. They had a man that could not help himself. And these four men grabbed their friend and carried him to where Jesus was because the problem, the, the fame had been so spread. They knew if they could just get to Jesus, it would be okay. Huh. But when they got there, you know the story. When they got there, the building was so full they could not even get in. Well, I guess we might as well go home. Sure can't do nothing here. No. They pressed, they, pressed the, 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 they pressed the obstacle in their life and they said, no, we are here. Jesus is here. We love our friend and he needs Jesus. And so they went up on the man's roof, unroofed the roof, and the Bible says that they lowered that man down to Jesus off of the rooftop. Amen. Can you imagine what that must have been like? We'll talk about that in just a second. But as he gets down in there, and imagine when he drops them down in there, and, 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 and they finally get there. Look in verse 12 of what happens. In verse 12 of Mark chapter 2, the Bible says, And immediately he arose from the bed, and he went forth before them all, insomuch that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, We never saw it on this fashion. Or you can say it like this. And immediately he arose, took up the bed, and went forth before them all, insomuch that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, This is the most amazing thing we have ever seen in our life. That's right. Man. I mean, can you imagine being there? Can you imagine what Jesus says to this when they drop this man down? And we see in verse 12 that this man is healed. This man gets up and all the people are looking on. And the man gets up and he grabs his bed that he's been hooked to all these years. And he couldn't walk. And for the first time, he gets up and grabs that bed. And he starts heading through the crowd. And all the people, you can see them turning their head in amazement. And they start beginning to say to each other, man, Take you something this morning. <laughs> It'd be a good thing this morning. It'd be a good thing this morning that if across America we could come in and out of the house of God, and when we leave here this morning, we could say, Man, can you believe what just happened in there? God showed up and people were healed. God showed up and people walked. God showed up and people talked. God showed up and people were made alive. Are you hearing me? Amen. 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 Oh, you can't. Amen. <laughs> yeah. Are you kidding? Are you kidding me this morning? And you know this morning as well as I do, there's churches out there are cold as, as Alaska as Alaska this morning. And if you dare to try to get an amen, a praise the Lord, or hallelujah, they would fall out and call you and ask you, please don't come back. That's a little bit too much for us. Huh? Huh? But can I tell you this morning that we ought to be again amazed. I'm talking about we get amazed about the news. We get amazed about sports. We get amazed about money. We get amazed about toys. We get amazed about every single thing in America. But when we come to the house of God, we get locked jaw and we dare not say amen. We dare not say praise God. We dare not say hallelujah. Because if you do that, we're going to ask for your membership back and send you down to the Pentecostal church. <laughs> amen. Thank you. Thank you. I'm about to die up here. Thank you. Do you not understand where you have been? Do you not understand what has transpired in your life? Yes. Yeah, you might not take me here this morning on a bed, but just the same, if you've been to Jesus, He has touched your life, you have 
Thank you. We're starting to get a couple more added on. <laughs> yes, sir. Huh? It's okay! How much and what shall we have today in Grants' church? Ah! How much? Ah! I don't want my grandkids going up not knowing that God's alive. Amen? Amen. I want them to know that the book of Hebrews says that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Do you understand that the Jesus we're talking about that entered into that house that day all the way 2,000 years ago and healed that man off his mind is the same Jesus. That's right. That is here today. There ain't no more other Jesus. That's it. Amen. Amen. Do you not get that? Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. I'll guarantee you one thing. You can't might not get this neighborhood to come to this church. But I guarantee you what'll happen. If you go outside this church and burn this thing down, I guarantee you everybody in this neighborhood will show up out there on that street to see what's going on. Yep. Hello? Yeah. You just go ahead and get on it. You ain't gonna scare me. Hallelujah. If you take a lap, I won't even care. I'll just keep preaching. Huh? Do you not get it this morning? I didn't come up here to waste your time this morning. I didn't come up here this morning anointed by God to come up here and razzle dazzle you. I have absolutely no razzle dazzle power whatsoever. Zero. All I have is what I know Jesus did inside of this dead cold heart years ago and I came alive and I want you to know Jesus is still alive. Amen. Thank you. You're catching on. But they still ain't hearing us. Huh? They ought to know that when we're coming out of here, we're different than when we came in. I don't want this to be August 15th, another service in 2021. I'm begging God that the fire, the revival, will stir in our hearts. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes. Amen. So you ain't got nothing to be revived about, well then. Let's just pause. We'll have an altar call right now. You can come get saved. Then you can go back to your seat. And then you'll have something to be revived about. Amen. 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 I'm never bad, George. I've been saved. I'm saved. Huh? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I'll tell you this morning. I want God to reach down inside our hearts this morning. Yes. And find that soul spirit in there. And say, you know I'm here. I'm in here. And I want out. But you hold me up in here because you won't shout. You hold me up here because you won't have joy. You hold me up in here because of some religion you following. Let me tell you just something. Which time we're going to set religion outside this morning for a minute. Amen. <laughs> we're going to take our little Baptist denomination thing. We're going to set it outside for a minute this morning. And we're going to allow Jesus to be Jesus. Amen. And we're going to allow Jesus to do whatever in your life that Jesus needs to do. I don't know what you came in here with this morning. But I'll guarantee you this morning. Every single person in the sound of my voice this morning has something they need Jesus to do for them today. Guaranteed. Huh? Guaranteed. Why do I know that? Because you're still here. <laughs> if you didn't have nothing else for Jesus to do, you'd have been on the other side kicking down gold dust, amen. <laughs> that shows me this morning God's not done with you this morning. God's not done with me this morning. But God likes a hot fire, amen? Mm -hmm. Huh? I mean, people are coming from everywhere. And I'm telling you this morning, I'm going to challenge you in the next few minutes to understand what it is and why Jesus is the wow factor. I mean, imagine that. This life of this man is never going to be the same. I know you like my fancy coat I threw on the floor. I know you like this nice tie and this nice shirt, these nice pants and these shiny shoes. But I'm going to tell you a little secret. Don't tell nobody this, okay? Might want to pause the camera here for a minute. It's not always been like that. I'm surprised my wife didn't shout hallelujah right there. <laughs> I'm surprised she didn't take a lap. Huh? It's not always been like this. 
there was a day that I didn't have any of that. There was a day that there was a great big huge hole inside of this dark heart. And I was crippled. Jesus said, rise up and walk. Amen. And immediately, immediately. <laughs> Right, we ain't going to rehab. We, we ain't going down to Sam to get no medicine. <laughs> I mean, you talk about, oh, okay. Huh? So here's a couple ideas that's going for us. Let's see if this will help us. Let's see if this will help us. First of all, G, the first of all, reason that Jesus is a wow factor is that Jesus knows exactly what you need. <laughs> Look at verse 5. This is so amazing. I'll tell you what. Again, it helps to have an imagination when you're reading the Word of God because this stuff is just is amazing. In verse 5, the roof's on roof. Straw or whatever it's made of, the thatch is still falling on the floor. The man is lowered down. The guys up on the roof are looking over in amazement because they have a front row seat. The building is slammed full of people. People are looking around to see what the world's going on. And as they stand there and they're looking in amazement, Jesus says to this man, Thy sins be forgiven. Amen. You what? I mean, can you imagine as this crippled man laid there on his bed and he probably didn't even understand what in the world is he talking about. Thy sins be forgiven. Does he not see me laying here on this mat? Does he not see that gaping hole in the roof? Does he not see my four friends standing there waiting for something magical to happen? And all Jesus could come up with is thy sins be forgiven? I mean... You know why? Because forgiveness is the greatest miracle that Jesus ever performed. Amen. It meets the greatest need. It costs the greatest price. And it brings the greatest blessing with everlasting results. More important than the healing of the man's body was the cleansing of his heart. He went home that day with a healed body but most amazing thing was the man went home that day and every day since with a healed heart at peace with God. And that's why Jesus said this morning, I know what you need. I know what you need, church member, and I got you covered. Everybody thought this man needed to be healed, but Jesus looked beyond that temporal problem and looked into the heart and said no. Yeah, that might be a thing. He might need to be healed. But the greatest need this man has is that he would know me as his Lord and Savior because whether he enters into heaven crippled, one day he will have a new glorified body and be with me forever and ever and ever and ever. Right. Amen. Now you tell me this morning and though I'm not making light of the man's crippledness and neither was Jesus. But the exciting thing this morning is that Jesus looks beyond the temple. Amen. He looks to the eternal. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we already seen Jesus in Mark chapter 1 healing people left and right and demon possessed. He was healing the lepers. He was healing all sorts of diseases, all sorts of unclean spirits, all this stuff going on. And everybody lost sight of why Jesus came. Jesus said in Mark, Expecting. Huh? Yeah. 
Jesus is trying to teach them that all that are the greatest need that mankind has is not that they may be made physically whole, but they are forgiven of their sins so they can be made spiritually whole. Not just having a possibility of a better or easier life here on earth, but have eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. Remember in the Gospel of Mark chapter 8, the Bible says, For what does it profit a man if he gain the whole world and lose his soul? That's right. And Jesus is trying to help the people there some 2,000 years ago and help us understand this morning the greatest need that men and people have today is they still need Jesus. Amen. And that is what we are here this morning to understand so that we can go out there to those that are crippled and that we can go out there to those that are blind and that we can go out there to those that are in misery and we can go out there to those that are in pain and we can go out there to those that are lonely and we can go out there to those that are sick and we can go out there to those that are seeking for every single thing they think they need and what they really need is what we have. Amen. Jesus. Amen. Huh? Jesus, what a wow factor. Think about it. Think about it. Jesus loved this man so much in our text and the whole world so much that he's willing to do whatever needed to be done and say whatever needed to be said so that this man and the world can get exactly what they really need. Out of the pages of Scripture, we don't always hear what we want to hear. Amen? Amen. But it will always be what we need to hear in order that we be set free. Truth. Remember this. This man not only had his sins forgiven, but most of all, the start of a whole new life. According to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, the Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And I need to point this out. Notice this crippled man, by the way, in verse 5, he's still crippled. He's not been made whole. He's still crippled. Didn't even understand what had just happened. I was even really willing to say that he might even have thought he got the short change. I mean, imagine with me if you would. I mean, all the stuff that we've heard Jesus doing, and when it comes to this guy here, he doesn't drive out demons. He doesn't make his eyes see. He doesn't make his ears heal. Here, he, he, he doesn't clean him, cleanse him of leprosy. He says to him, thy sins be forgiven. And you can imagine this guy's laying there and he's saying, oh, um, <clears throat> hello, <laughs> oh, time out. They're taking a pause here, okay? I'm still down here on this mat. Yeah, that's me down here. I'm still crippled. Which leads us to the next thought. The reason Jesus is a wow factor is because he knows exactly what you need. Maybe not what you want, but what you need. Second thought is he knows exactly everything about you. Look what happens here. Jesus is standing there and this man's laying on the mat and you've got to know I would be. I mean, if Jesus is healing all these other people and all I get is thy sins be forgiven, are you kidding? Hmm. <laughs> No, I didn't, I didn't come here for that, preacher. I came, to, I came to walk. All I want to do is walk. I don't want to buy all this sin stuff. I just want to walk. And all of them in, 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 in verse 6 and 7 and 8, they're, 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 the scribes are, are starting beginning in their hearts and wondering, what in the world's going on? This guy's blaspheming God. He can't forgive sin. Here's what Jesus says. Because he knows exactly everything about you and I. He says, and immediately Jesus perceived in his spirit. Now the word perceive means to know thoroughly, to know accurately, and to know all. According to the word of God, we know that God is infinite or without limits or boundaries in knowledge. Therefore meaning that God is all knowing. 
We call that in the Word of God the omnipotent, the omnipotence of God. God is complete. He is not continually learning about you or anything. From eternity past to eternity present and to eternity future. God has always known everything about your life. God is never surprised. God is never stunned. God is never shocked. God is never confused. God is never confounded. God is never puzzled. God is never perplexed. God is never bewildered. God knows things immediately, simultaneously, exhaustively, and nothing ever will or ever has taken God by surprise. Words you will never hear God say, Wow! I did not see that coming. Now, I don't know what that does for you, but just to stand here this morning and understand is I try to put all the pieces of my confused life together. God already has the puzzle made. God already knows the end result. God already knows the things that I will go through. Amen. Amen. Do you not understand? Remember, we serve a risen Savior who's in the world today. He walks in me and talks in me and knows along. Do you not get what I'm saying? You are not sitting there on that pew by yourself this morning in a desert land that God I know, I do. It's just, it's just, it's just a way of we're our fallen nature. We sit there and we wring our hands and we worry about what we're going to do next and what's going to happen next and oh my, this, oh my. But God tells these people and He's helping them to understand. Listen, I know what you're thinking before you're even thinking it. <laughs> hey, hey, what y'all talking about over there? I don't know, but y'all won't tell me what you're talking about. And they didn't even answer them. Jesus said, no, let me go a little bit further. Let me tell you something here. Let me help you understand who you're talking to. i tell you what you're thinking right now. You're thinking it's easier for me to tell this man to rise up and walk or your sins be forgiven. Oh, i tell you what. You just don't understand who I am. That's right. Amen. And you don't understand. Like that right there would have just blown the socks off of me. Amen. Amen. I mean, you sitting there in your high seat. Am I still in the boundaries here? Good. Screw over a little bit. I got all kinds of instructions when I come to this church. I'll tell you what. Watch us all sit in the right place. I mean, this is crazy. Huh? It's crazy. And these guys are looking around talking, hey, did you just did you just see that? Who does he think he is? We are the religious leaders here. He's not. Is he talking about that sins be forgiven? Huh? Do you understand this morning that you sit here this morning in the presence of God Almighty? And God is so intricately interested in you. You know what? He didn't move down the street so you could go visit him. Oh, I'm feeling a little bad today. I better go get him a car and drive down to see Jesus. No. God said in the book of Corinthians, you people, you people are so perplexed. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. I can't, I can't leave you alone. I'm going to come right on inside there. And I'm going to put right inside there the home where I'm going to dwell. Amen. The temple, the Bible says in the book of Corinthians, the temple of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hallelujah. And inside there, Jesus says, I'm, I'm right here. I'm right here. Yeah. You don't got to go see the shrink. You don't gotta go get some medicine. I'm just I'm right here. You don't gotta go nowhere. The only place you might want to do is just fall on your face and just praise me. Because yeah. I know exactly what you need and I know exactly what you're thinking. Yes, and I'm here Amen. to tell you that. You. Huh? I don't know what comfort that brings you, but I'm gonna tell you what. <laughs> I have made a literal mess of my life a lot of times. Huh? Don't sit there and look at me like you 
you don't know what I'm talking about. Huh? Yeah. And it, the only thing can straighten that out was Jesus himself. And the whole time you trying to find something else to help you, Jesus is inside there saying, hey, I'm inside here. And I know what you're doing. I know what you're thinking. I know what you got to do. And I'll tell you, no, that's not what you need to do. You know, I'll tell you right now, the next time the devil comes to you and tries to convince you that God doesn't care about you, let me give you a little verse for you to jot down in your little journal. Psalm 147, verse 4 and 5 says this. He falleth, he, he, he feeleth the number of the stars. He calls them all by their name. God, great is our Lord. And a great power. His understanding is infinite. God's knowledge is without limits. Nothing is hidden from him. Listen, do you not understand this morning? What makes Jesus so amazing is that when we become his children, he does not leave one moment of our life to change. Not one moment of my life is out of the care of my loving Savior. Now, I might get stupid, and I might try to go, which I do, and I might try to go do something on my own, which is not the right thing to do, and I get myself in a bad situation. But that's not Jesus' fault. Um, the whole time he's in there telling me, don't, yeah, he said don't do that. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you. And don't do it, but I, I sometimes I'll do it anyway. But that doesn't that that's not Jesus' fault. That's my fault. Huh? Listen, Jesus is trying to help us this morning. Is that God knowing all things is taught clearly in the scriptures? But how does that affect my life? It gives me comfort to know that when it seems like no one else cares, I know He does because He is set out before I was even I. He knew everything about me, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Can you say amen right there? Amen. amen. Watch this though. You're about to have a Pentecostal fit. But the Bible says he still, and yet, he still chose to love me. What is that? Amen. I mean, Jeremiah talks about before you were even in your mother's womb, I knew you. Before you were even formed, I knew you and set you apart to be a vessel of God's honor. That's right. I mean, before he was even a twinkling in dad's eye, God said, hey, do you not get this? I knew everything about you. I had a plan A, not a plan B, a plan C, a plan D. I had a plan A. I knew what I called you to do. serving this morning. Amen. I don't have to leave it to chance. What is George Carnes going to do? I don't have to chance that. If I don't know what to do, my resource is to drop to my knees and beg God to give me wisdom and show me the path that I am to travel. Yep. Now how hard can that be? That's right. And these people sitting around getting all freaked out about Jesus forgiving this man's sin because they didn't get what they wanted. Mm -hmm. hmm. That's right. That was their department, the religious department. Yeah. yeah. They didn't get the outcome they wanted, so they got all bowed up about it and got all snuffy. <laughs> Jesus put them in their place because he knew. <laughs> he knew before they even thought of themselves. <laughs> He knew that this was going to happen. Huh? I don't know what that does for you, but folks, I'm telling you what. 
That is absolutely so comforting to my heart this morning to know that God loves me so, so much. Hmm. Yeah. Amen. And that nothing with God is left to chance. Third thought I have for you this morning. We're going out and we're going to go home. And we buy our time. First of all, Jesus knows exactly what you need. Verse number five, thy sins be forgiven. Also, Jesus knows everything about you, even before you do. Verse 8, and immediately Jesus perceived in his spirit. And lastly this morning, Jesus knows how to bless your life. The great thing about grace and mercy is we don't deserve either one of them. Yep. And when this man came to Jesus by lowered down by his friends, he didn't deserve what he got, but Jesus loved him so much, he granted him grace and mercy in spite of I mean, if that would, and they all know they didn't get it, but you would think, you would think that if he got just that, that would be absolutely amazing. When I finally realized that God saved me, I thought, how in the world could somebody save somebody like me? And I thought, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. But I purposely didn't give you the rest of that last text. And that's this. Jesus knows how to bless your life. Here it is. You ready? But he does it in such a way that it's more abundant. Not just bless. I'm talking about John 10.10 10 says that he's come that we might have life and that we might have it more abundant. Amen. <laughs> yeah. In Ephesians, the book of Ephesians talks about now to God who is able to do exceedingly abundant abundantly above all that we can even think or imagine. <laughs> That's the God I'm talking about this morning. Amen. Here's this man in verse 12. He's still crippled as he can be. <laughs> all this stuff going on, all these religious people are piping in on what's going on. Everybody's stirring around. Everybody's excited. And Jesus, I'm going to tell you what's going to fix and happen here. huh? I gave the man exactly what he needed. He needed to be born again. Amen. He needed to be entered into the kingdom of heaven. Holy man. But I'm going to tell you who I really am. I didn't come that they might just have life. Amen. I came that they might have abundant life. Amen. I am here to test Testify to you this morning that God has blessed my life beyond what I could have ever imagined and beyond what I could have ever gotten for myself in a gazillion years. God has blessed your life the same way and you know it, amen. You know you don't deserve what you have this morning. Don't look at me this morning like you don't understand what I'm talking about. If you're here this morning and you're on your way to glory, that's all. That's all God came to do is a seeking to save the lost. Amen. That was his number one mission. But because he loves you so much, sir, he wants you to know that's not all he has for you. Amen. Right. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. David said, My cup runneth over. You know what that literally means in the Hebrew? That David said, My cup just keeps running and running and running and running and running and running and running over. That's right, yeah. I'll tell you this morning, there is no, there is no nation other than Israel itself, like the United States of America, blessed beyond measure. I mean, I'm talking about bless beyond measure. Yep. Huh? Yeah. God bless America. Hallelujah. I love America. I love the ability to know that people have literally given their life to know that you and I can come in here this morning and understand from the Holy Scriptures that we are so blessed where well, we can't even understand how blessed we are this morning. And it's allowed us to sleep. It's put us in a, in a dead coma to realize God is not obligated to bless my life. He wants to bless my life. Amen. Amen. The 
God this morning wants you and I to know is that the greatest thing we can do this morning is understand this truth. Your greatest need, if you're not saved this morning, you need to be saved. Because until you do that, nothing else will matter. If this man would have got healed that day and walked out of that building, he'd have been the same man going home as he was leaving home, other than now he'd be walking instead of being crippled. Amen. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Here's that imagination thing going on again. Can you imagine? <coughs> the guy's laying down. He's got no hope. I'm not doing this. This is not an illustration. I'm just tired right now. <laughs> you thought I was joking. <laughs> <She's> serious. <laughs> This man is laying down cold stiff. She's says, Thy sins be forgiven. And then later on in the, in the reading, Jesus says, Rise up. Take up thy bed. And walk. Can you even out that window well, that can't be that can't be Joe he's walking huh? yeah hmm. that's what happened we go out of here this morning after meeting with Jesus yeah. the people in this neighborhood see you coming out of here thinking why well, well, that can't be King Road back to church holy cow they stepping in their step they look like they look like they look like they're happy. They look, like, they look like they went to church. No, no, it doesn't. It looks like they went and had church. Quite a difference. Hmm. Listen, I don't know what you need this morning. All I'm here to tell you is Jesus can make that be. I don't know what your thoughts are this morning. I know you think you have them hid from everybody, but you don't have them hid from God. He knows. So why don't you just tell him what he already knows and let that burden go this morning. And this morning, I know you're blessed because I know anybody that's been washed in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ is blessed. Amen. And I know God has given you more than you could ever imagine. So this morning, with our heads bowed and eyes closed, it's just a simple question for me. I don't know if you're doing that. Everybody here maybe possibly knows that Jesus you know, Christ is my personal Lord and Savior. I don't know. That might be you this morning. It was me years ago, years ago. 
but I realize I didn't put my complete trust and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Maybe that's you this morning, and I'm not coming to you in embarrassment, but maybe you just need prayer this morning. Can you just raise your hand real quick and let me pray for you? Thank you very much. Thank you for your honesty. Listen, the simple, glorious truth this morning is the fact that Jesus has exactly what you need. Calvary was not an afterthought. It was the only thought. So this morning, if you have that need this morning, you can come this morning and allow Jesus to say to you, thy sins be forgiven. And this morning, maybe you're just having a hard time. Maybe maybe life is just, you just, you're just perplexed and you don't know. Maybe you just need prayer this morning for comfort to know that God is still in control and you just like prayer for that. You raise your hand and put your voice. Just a lot going on. Yeah, thank you. A lot going on. I just don't understand it, but I'm glad to know that Jesus does. So with our heads bowed and eyes closed, I ask you to stand to your feet real quick. As we everybody standing to their feet, the pianist has begun to play. I'm just going to ask you this, and we're going to sing just as I am. Isn't that a very amazingly appropriate song for this morning? You don't got to be nothing. You don't got to do nothing. All you've got to do is admit that you need Jesus. That's it. And if you want to come this morning, we'll take the word of God and show you how you can have that answer you need. Father, this morning as we come to this time of invitation, this is what it's all about. And I pray, God, that you would help us to just realize how amazing you are this morning. For the one this morning that honestly had admitted, Father, that they are not sure about their eternal salvation. Thank you, God, for that honesty and that truthfulness. Help them, Lord, and give them courage to be able to step out when we begin to sing and to come down here. We can take the Word of God and show them how that they can know the Lord as their personal Lord and Savior. For those this morning that are perplexed and not maybe sure what's going on in life, Give them comfort this morning. Maybe they need to come to the altar and pray. I don't know. Whatever it is, God, you know. We're asking you to do so. To your will, to your glory, in Jesus' name. If we begin to sing with our heads bowed and eyes closed, you need to come this morning. You come now.